This week on Crunch Week, boxes earnings are sort of mixed. Apples, all gold, everything. And what is up with Meerkat? Hi, everybody. Welcome to Crunch Week. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm Kyle Russell. And I'm Alex Wilhelm. And this is an important episode, a very important episode. We have the first time Miss Sarah Lane is on the show. Thanks for letting me be on the show. Well, you're kind of hosting it, so let them, you know, thank you for having us on the show. But well, welcome to TechCrunch. I just, thank you. It's good to be here. You I've, I've watched you, you all from afar yeah, been, on Fridays. How long have you been here? Two months. Two months now. Jeez. It's crazy. All right. It's been terrible, but I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Thanks. It's been a material addition to the team and an improvement to our production quality. You know what also is an improvement? Mm. Uh, the fact that you uh, thought a lot about Box's earnings yesterday, so I didn't have to. Yeah, I got your back on that one. So uh, <laughs> as everyone knows, Box finally IPO'd earlier this year. And, uh, did it was their, like last month, wasn't it? It was about a month ago, yeah. And they did their very first earnings report as a public company, and they got slaughtered by the market. Which was weird because they beat on both revenue and adjusted profit, but what happened was there was an analyst fuck up. And so they, they did their predictions wrong. So everyone uh -huh. thought when they reported earnings they actually lost on profit when they beat on profit. And so is Box is common? like, no, this has never happened before in my experience. But new companies, new IPOs, new shares, it's not all locked in like IBM analysts, for example. So there's a huge mistake. Box is like, what the hell? We actually beat on both of our metrics. But investors were, I think, a little skittish about slower than expected growth and margins and so forth. But I mean, Box is, you know, how public, and this is what you have to deal with when that's where you are in the market. So it's kind of been tough to watch. So any of this surprise you, Kyle? Uh, what surprised me was how harshly the market was willing to react. I mean, he was on the listening to the earnings call while also you know typing stuff up as he does, and he would just like, occasionally giggle because he'd be like, "They're down ten percent, fifteen percent." Don't say, don't. That, they're gonna see this, and I'm gonna sound terrible. I did hear a seventeen and a giggle yesterday. Okay, I was shocked at how bad it was. But that, but that wasn't because you're happy it was happening. It was, it was because just absurd it seemed that like it was a fast fall. Yeah. Gallows humor. <laughs> I was in, it wasn't Scheiden, Scheiden Freud, Scheiden, Scheiden. Scheiden Freud. There we go, that one. It wasn't that. It was more like, what the hell? I have no idea what's going on. Um, but I think the company will just work hard and beat their numbers next time and then hopefully ride the ship. So hmm. I'm optimistic. We'll see. Well, you know, enterprise. Yeah, it's, it's tough to, Tough to be public when you're an enterprise company. And Box was rumored to be, like, leading up to the IPO. The IPO everyone expected, but it was rumored for, like, years, I felt like. Yeah, it was, it it was a like long years. cycle, but they just weren't ready. They, were, they weren't ready the first time they filed. So, I mean, I think the Box was a company people expected to go public, but wasn't as mature as people kind of thought. Mm -hmm. And so when its first S1 dropped, everyone was like, well, what? And then they worked for three more quarters, got an IPO out, did well, are still up, but now it's certainly, like your vegetables time and pray to God that you don't know about this quarters. All right, so let's move on to Apple. Or the Apple had its big day on Monday, which seems like a lifetime ago now. The news cycle works that way. Yeah. But uh, you know, how do we all feel about the Apple Watch, the fact that we've, we've had a few days to think about $17,000 phones. Kevin Rose wrote an interesting piece. He's sort of a phone dude, and he's like, no way. He's an Apple phone dude, actually. He's an Apple phone dude. He, he also runs an app that's devoted to watches. So you can say he has a lot invested in whether or not the Apple Watch does well or not. What a horologist. <laughs> Which I, is, that's a term I just learned this week, by the way. Horologist. I think they had a very strong showing. Uh, I think a lot of people came, you know, expectations are always going to be high, especially when you know that this is the real event where they're demonstrating a new product category, which doesn't happen often for Apple. You know, yeah. it's phones, tablets, you know, this is their next big thing. Uh, they had a lot of, you know, starting even with the smaller beats that weren't the main event, though, opening with cutting the price of Apple TV, and now they're going to be the exclusive launch partner for HBO Now, which is the over-the-top service you'll be able to get instead of, you know, subscribing to cable and then getting HBO with for, that. For, what, 15 bucks? $15 is that? a yeah. month. And they that sounds it. so reasonable to they're me. They're going to have exclusivity yeah. starting the month that Game of Thrones and Silicon Valley comes back, and then that'll go through the Very three smart. months. And Veep. So, Right, Veep? so they're going to get three. Funniest show on television? Okay. They basically have well, the entirety time. of the time when those shows are have their new seasons, yeah. they'll have that exclusively, so enough, that's smart. Just enough, it's like the exclusivity when people go, well, it's only three months and then you have other options, but it's just enough time for someone to be like, oh, an Apple TV is only $69, that seems really reasonable, now I'm hooked, that's just the set-top box that I have, Apple and that's TV, the one I use. It's now a purchase, uh, impulse purchase buy. I mean, now it's like 70 bucks, I can just like, it's like one bar tab over the weekend, right? Like, who cares? I think it's very affordable. I think I saw a lot of them. But now, you said that $15, you said that you didn't think that that was affordable well, for HBO. Well, I already pay so much to Comcast every month. I don't really want a new recurring payment for content. I'm a Netflix subscriber. I pay a lot to Comcast. I pay a fuckload to Verizon every month. Like, do I want another content pay? But do you, uh, do you, ha you don't have HBO in your bundle that you pay Comcast? Ironically, I pay for cable and don't own a television, so I don't know. So that's the thing. Is, I, recently <laughs> had, the story behind that. I recently had wow. television and internet through AT&T, and... 
the internet was actually a pretty good deal, but the TV, in order to get HBO, we bought into the channel, like, package mm -hmm. necessary to then add that on top. Canceling that because I knew HBO Now was on its way was one of the most satisfying like what purchasing was the price decisions Delta? I've made. Uh, my bill has come down from two hundred and fifteen dollars a month to less like eighty to ninety five. It varies with fees that who knows what I'm actually paying for, but it's more than a hundred dollars a month I'm saving. I feel like I mean Game of Thrones is the most pirated show known of to all man time. of all time, right? And. For someone who's like, okay, I just don't have cable, I don't want cable, I'm a cord cutter, whatever, I mean, the, the fact stands that a lot of people are illegally getting content that they really want and they don't have access to. I really do think that history has shown that if you give somebody something that's pretty reasonable for content that they should pay for, they will. Okay, well, we're still on the topic of the Apple event. Quick poll. Uh, you know, now it's available in space gray, silver, and gold, just like the phones and tablets, the new MacBook. Which ones would you guys get? Gold. You're all about the gold. Oh my that gosh. Life. Gold is. I, if you give me an option to have a gold <laughs> laptop, I will take it. Okay. I know that's a little douchey, but I'm gonna take it. You know you're gonna roll into Starbucks and there'll be a guy with his <laughs> Apple Gold Watch out, and then he'll have his gold laptop and his gold phone. Oh, someone just on the table at the same time. But, Who knows how that happened? But the MacBook is not the gold edition. The but gold edition watch is just like that's for people who. Are super rich, so we can call them douchebags because we're not. Oh. Gold MacBook. It's a, it's a colored anodized aluminum. Yeah. That's all it is. Right. It looks horrible. It's like if you poured champagne into your laptop and let it stick for two weeks. Well, fine. I'm still going to get it. All right. Okay. I'm still going to judge it. I think okay. I'm personally going to vary based on like. I want to have different colors for my watch and tablet and phone and laptop, just so that I so that I don't give off that like he has all gold. Obviously, he's just in so love with Apple. So you're gonna buy more overpriced Apple shit to avoid looking like a guy who buys Apple shit to begin with. Guys, yeah, I'm gonna be. That was literally with the that. dumbest thing I've heard since I read. It's a fashion company. Are you gonna wear silver earrings and a gold bracelet and then like some like weird platinum necklace? I don't think so. My socks don't match. All I don't right. think I give a fuck. You know what? I think this is a good time to move on, <laughs> and I think that we should. You can't see him, but off screen we're actually. Um, um, we're actually getting recorded by an app called Meerkat, yes. which, you know, if, if, if you, unless you've been living under a rock for the last, oh, I don't know, seven days or, or so. Or just don't use Twitter. It's, it's something that litters your Twitter feed um, on, a, on, a, on an hourly basis, yes. if not minutely, depending on who your friends are. So let's talk about Meerkat. It's a, it's a live streaming app. The concept is not new. The delivery of how people get links is kind of new because it links into Twitter. In fact, that's the only way that you can share Meerkat links, correct? Yes. So that's kind of interesting. And even then, there have been some early examples of this kind of use case, you know, around the events happening in Ferguson. Uh, a mm. lot of people were using, you know, Ustream as a right, platform right. and then sharing those links via Twitter. But this is so much more deeply integrated with that experience. Like, responding on Twitter ends up putting the comments in the Meerkat video for the person broadcasting and things like that. Or that level of integration, I think, just increases engagement so much. Also, when you hit stream, it's instant. There's no yeah. way, lag, ask, switching just like, apps. and now. Bam. Here, here's the problem, though. It's instant, except that then you get this like link rot, because as soon as you turn off your stream, and somebody just happens to be a couple minutes behind you on Twitter, and they're like, oh, cool, Alex is streaming. Ah, oh, stream ended. It's an effective troll. Either you show up or you don't, you snooze, you lose, back off. Back off. It's, you know, the whole point is it's now. It's very much the, in the exact moment of now. It's not ephemeral. It's not recorded. It's literally live. But it so if you does don't... end up seeming spammy, doesn't it? You see oh, all God, the yes. same live now. I, I live turned, now. I turned off the apps notifications because, especially the early days where it was really experimental, I you'd have the same people trying it out for 30 seconds at a time, a couple times in the same hour, and you'd get a bunch of notifications, and it was this is not useful at all to me. I wonder if that's a problem for them because there's multiple avenues to get you to come into a video, but you know you got to play that balance really. I don't know, it's a tricky problem. To they're with. definitely too far on the spam side right now, but they're so new and fun. We don't care. But in a month, we're gonna be like, if I see one more Meerkat tweet, I'm gonna kill somebody. You already well, see I, tweets like that on Twitter, though. I've already made those tweets. I also feel like this is very interesting timing because we are going right into South by Southwest Interactive that starts officially tomorrow. Some of the people from TechCrunch are going, and Meerkat seems like just because it's kind of like the hot app on everybody's mind is going to be overused to the point where it's either going to show some sort of a use case that none of us have thought of yet, just because so many people are going to be in one place talking about it and using it, or by Tuesday, it'll be done. If you're going to go to South by and drink, <laughs> don't. 
because you will be on Meerkat. Like all the dumb stuff you used to talk about about South by, like Ooh, remember at the, the bar in South by, there won't be a record of it. But now there will be a live record. Ephemeral live streaming. It, yeah, if only. But people but are going to. But it isn't see ephemeral though because you can save your own recording. Also, you can just screen capture someone else's Meerkat. So it's really not anonymous at all. So if no. you're going to do dumb stuff in the South by, you know, don't, don't. Well, that's a really great moral and words to live by. And I think that that's what we should use to wrap up this edition of Crunch Week. Don't be dumb at South by. Don't be spammy. Don't be stupid and meerkat on. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs>